All right, so here's the updated flow. Now let's carry out the algorithm again. All right, we carry out the algorithm again, but it's a different flow. So the algorithm is going to behave differently. So we start by labeling the source, and now we do a scan from the source. We'll look at a whole bunch of vertices, but we'll only be able to label one of them, and that's the, the vertex B. And now the label on B is S plus and 4. Uh, let me go backwards. See the labeling on B? S plus 12. Now the labeling on B is S plus 4 because the spare capacity has been reduced down to 4. All right, now we scan from B, and the only thing that we can label will be E, and E gets its direction, it gets its label from B, but going in the negative direction, and the quantity is 4. Even though the, spare, the excess flow is 16, you can't get more than 4 units over there. Okay, and now uh, scan from B and from E, you just can't, you get no new things. Yes? Um, why can't we put A instead of, instead of E and then go in that direction, still uh, minus direction, right, from B? But it's empty. You can't go in a negative direction on an empty edge. Oh, oh okay. So you will scan from B, you'll find E only E, you will scan from E and you will get no new vertices to be labeled. The scanning is complete. Those three vertices are the label vertices. That's going to be, it says, the, it should be uh, L. L is SBE and R is everything else. Okay, now let's identify the edges which go from labeled to unlabeled. I see one at the top. It's 29. The 15 and the 18 go backwards. Now, keep scanning down. See BG? That's positive. That's 15. BC is positive. That's 47. SC is positive. That's 16. Add up those numbers. What do you get? You should get 107. So the algebra tells us that once there are no augmenting paths, then the label vertices that you can reach with Ford Fulkerson versus the ones you can't reach is a cut whose capacity is equal to the value of the current flow. All right, now. Let me just pause here and make a comment. I'm skipping a detail here, which is important in a theoretical sense, but it, it, the de full details are a little bit beyond the level of this course. The reason that you embed Dijkstra is so that this algorithm becomes what's called strongly polynomial. That means that the running time is polynomial in the number of vertices and does not depend on the capacities themselves. You can show that at most O of n cubed iterations, so n cubed instances of Dijkstra suffice to find the maximum flow when there are n nodes in the network. So this is a cubic time polynomial algorithm. Okay. I, now, I'm not going to prove that last part. I just want you to be aware of it. The, the, you can find the proof in any optimization textbook. <laughs>